We can still be in love with ourselves and in love with our lives and amplify the joy and the ease and the aliveness, even if we are in the thick. It just takes awareness and a perspective shift and intention. Hey mama, welcome to Naturally Empowered Living, your safe space to guiding you on your unapologetic self-awakening journey to learning your energy of alignment and feeling good again. This is your weekly sanctuary to wake up from autopilot and transform the way you approach motherhood and life through the power of meditation, energetics, and root cause therapy. It's my mission to help you embody the foundations of self-love, trust, and interconnection to be unapologetic in the evolution of who you are. Here, we honor all parts of ourselves, the messy and the magic, the shadows and the light. If you are ready to get to the roots of cultivating real change, warm up that cold coffee, pop in your earbuds and tighten that top knot, mama. Let's discover our power within together. What is up, beautiful mamas? Welcome back to another episode of Naturally Empowered Living. I am so thankful to be here as always. When I was feeling into what I wanted to do for this week's episode, we're jumping right in. <laughs> what when, when I was feeling into like what is, you know, the topic of this episode because you guys know that, you know, I, I just shared recently like my whole outline and like how I have a Google sheet and if it's resonated with me, like I have this whole list of ideas and then if it resonates with me, we roll with that. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. And it, lately, like what I've been writing on that Google sheet, like of ideas and topics, it's just not resonating with how I'm feeling, how I'm feeling, how I feel like the collective is feeling. And I pray and I hope that this message is delivered to you in a way that is one well received and two it's something that you needed to hear today because once it came to me it came through loud and clear that this is what I needed to be speaking on and ironically enough this is something that I've been reminding myself a lot lately and that's why I think it came in loud and clear like to bring it on this show because it has been something that's been a really beautiful impactful kind of slap in the face reminder in my life lately and I hope that it can be helpful in yours too. So that is what we're talking about today is how to fall in love with your life. Even when life feels hard, you feel stuck or stagnant or in limbo because we all know like when we're feeling good and things are going well and we feel alive and lit up and energized and like life is good, we're living in our energy of alignment, like things are just flowing. And like shit just, we just let it roll off our backs, right? Like, oh, you know, like I'm feeling good. Like we we're just letting it flow. That's amazing when we're living in that energy of alignment. What about the times when things aren't going well? When things aren't running smoothly and we aren't able to just let that shit roll off our backs. We can't just let things go. How do we stay in love with our lives then? When we're possibly at rock bottom, in a dark night of the soul, when things feel sticky or you're in limbo or you don't know the right answer or decision or direction to take. Oh my gosh. I feel this so deeply because I, that's where I, that's where I'm at. I feel this. How do you fall in love with your life when you're experiencing a low moment or you're experiencing self doubt or you're experiencing conflict with a loved one, or you're experiencing more stress than normal, or whatever it is, whatever that circumstances is that's coming at you, how do we learn how to fall in love with our lives in those moments? To be able to stay in love with our life and fall back into alignment, possibly, hopefully quicker. Because I I already have been transparent with you, but as I always am, right? I'm rolling in and out of alignment a lot lately. And it's fucking wild. Like the more people that I'm talking to, the more conversations that I have, people are struggling with a lot of the same things. And I call no coincidences in these moments, like only signs and lessons. And it's funny because like being in this spiritual presence and the spiritual role, I suppose, like, yes, being the teacher, but also like I've, I've, done years and years and years of this like education and learning so I'm like what is the lesson like I'm ready like I'm aware I'm I'm like I'm aware of there where I'm struggling so it's like I kind of get impatient sometimes <laughs> because I'm like I know that I'm in the shit help me find the clarity you know like what is the sign what is the lesson here but anyway like within these moments what has come through to me in these moments is like with these conversations that I'm having with like seeing the 
the, uh, the connection and the parallels to the more and more people that I'm talking to, it's helped me see solidarity. It's helped me feel the solidarity to know, to know that I'm not alone, that you are not alone, that we're not failing at life and that there is a lot that goes into the ebbs and flows of the world and the energies and all this magical stuff if you zoom out so far to all the shit possibly going off, you know, in your own bubble and within your home or life or whatever that is within your life right now. There are no coincidences in my opinion. And I I feel the heaviness and I feel the shifts lately. And it doesn't make it easier. But for me, and that's why I'm sharing this, for me it helps bring peace in knowing if we come together, we can as a collective make powerful shifts. We can, as a collective, share our vulnerabilities to share the solidarity and relatability to know that we aren't alone. Because by golly, that helps our mental health a little bit, right? (laughs) But I know that that's kind of off topic, but that's just me, like, you know, coming at you from my spiritual energetic self, feeling so much into this that the discernment sometimes that I struggle with is, okay, what is me and what is like the collective here? And that's why... Yeah. Okay. So like having conversations helps me validate how I feel sometimes in discerning what is mine and what is, what is like the collective energy of of the world or of the seasons right now. So even by having these conversations and you know, if you don't believe in the energetic woo woo stuff, how can you not see the serendipities in these moments? Like there is a lesson and there is always a reason that's happening to benefit your highest good. And for me, that alone just brings peace. Like, okay, through this hardship, there will be light. Through this hardship, we'll find the lesson. Through this hardship, we'll find the message. But okay, reeling it back in here. <laughs> you get a taste where my mind goes, right? You That is like a taste of where my mind goes when I am like in the heart and I'm like processing through it or I'm in prayer, or meditation or journaling. It's like my I just go all over the place. So I share a lot of those tangents here too because that's me. <laughs> More surface level that I just shared right now that was a lot more surface level than how kind of deep that I go, but that shows you how much I do dive into the research (laughs) because I'm so obsessed with this work. But okay, anyway, so how do we learn to fall in love with our lives in these hard moments? Or if you're in a a good moment, like if you're in your energy of alignment right now, amazing. When you have that next hard season, you could come back to this episode, episode 103 of Naturally Empowered Living. So I was talking to my VA and OBM the other week. Um, <laughs> and spoiler, she's going to be on next week. She is our guest on the show next week. So can't wait to talk with her. But I was chatting with her the other week about how how I'm in this limbo. Like I, I'm so grateful of where I am and all that I'm creating and all that she's helping me co-create. But for some reason, I just... I feel this sense of like being stuck and just like on this hamster wheel, like that sense of being this donkey chasing this carrot sometimes. And then if you're not sure of what I mean by that, you could check out episode 41 of this show. But I was sharing with her just like some personal and business stuff and like how I just feel like stuck in this limbo and kind of like a prisoner sometimes. And I'm just lacking clarity on certain things and I'm lacking the the know-how of how to solve some things and whatever, like everything that we have going on, I've just felt caught in this limbo of still being grateful, but being impatient in a sense also in waiting for this clarity in certain things and making the actual moves and other things and, you know, finding, finding the answers and other things. And, and yeah, so if you could just relate to that, like when you kind of feel like stuck, like what is this next step? She said exactly the reminder that I needed to hear in those moments. She was like, Jenna, what's the carrot in front of you right now? Just keep being present. Follow that spark, that flame, that idea, that inspiration, that joy, that creativity that's in front of you right now. And like, (laughs) as simple as that is, like it just gave me this light bulb aha moment. Like, yes, like. Thank you, Andrea. Like that is exactly what I needed in this moment because chasing that proverbial carrot of whatever the future holds and I'm just so like impatient of like getting there now or, you know, like God's plan. It's like because I know that it's it's not the same as mine right now and I just feel out of alignment. Even though my like my energetic baseline is still rooted in that gratitude, I was losing it in the present moment. 
So by following the joy and following the spark and the flames and the spontaneities of what will light you up now in these moments, right now, that is what is going to keep your joys and passions alive while you are figuring it out, while you you are in that thick, while you are finding the clarity or while you are on this path. This really hit me in a massive way because I realized how often do we wait until we reach that goal to feel the thing. Then we will, you know, have that aliveness, but we we can't feel that aliveness until this happens. We wait until we find something to find our joy again because that something is going to be what solves what's happening now. And it's not. Right? We're always looking ahead. We're always looking into when this happens, then I will feel the thing. And I'm guilty of this too. Like even with all the work that I've done, on myself, with myself, the education that I have immersed myself in, all the people that I have helped, I still, like I'm sharing this with you, I still have these moments of like, when I get there or when I arrive there, then I'll feel this. And it's such a subtle sense of like chasing happiness in a sense rather than feeling the happiness right now. Like, why do we outsource our happiness to something else outside of ourselves? Like, why, why, why do we outsource that? Where is it that we are waiting to feel the happiness now? Why are we waiting to feel the gratitude now? Where are we waiting to fall in love with our lives now? So in that sweet and simple message from Andrea, I, I wanted to share that with you because like, hello, like this is our human experience. There's going to be hardships and bumps and shadows and setbacks with the ease and flow and light and the abundance. And rather than solely choosing to be in love with life when things are good, we can still choose to be in love with life when things are not so good. That does not mean that we are bypassing. That doesn't mean that we're, you know, gatekeeping or that you can't feel the stress or the anger or sadness or whatever feelings that you're feeling in these hard moments. But what I want to help you kind of realize is how do you tap into your love and aliveness for life even in those hard moments? How can I cultivate it from within myself? Because it's not actually something that comes from out there. It's not something that comes from the circumstance that you're in. It's not something that comes from the external. It's something that is evoked with inside of ourselves because everything exists inside of ourselves now. And if I can tap in to that feel good emotion right now, with or without those external circumstances changing, I'm in the shit right now, but if I can tap into that aliveness, How can I allow myself to breathe that in this moment and raise my baseline of vibration, to raise my energetic baseline back up, even though I'm in the shit? Not necessarily to that highest frequency there is, but maybe it's about shifting the perception that is within you, shifting the embodiment, shifting the frequency that is within you. And by shifting the frequency, just by shifting the feeling. I know that I've talked about this before, but having that perspective shift of zooming out of your life to see the bigger picture. And let's paint this picture right now in these moments as you're listening to this. You are a human listening to this episode of this show who has been given a life to live. You have been given this human experience on this planet that floats in the freaking universe of goodness knows what. Like you already won. You hit the jackpot because you are here. You are the miracle that was created and given this life. And if you're in the shit, you're probably like, Jenna, I don't need to hear this right now. But in this moment, in this point of time, during this peace and phase of the world, you are given this time now. So when we get to the day to day, we're zooming back in, you know, to our shit and our lives and our grime and feel like we're buried face down in the mud, feeling consumed by our emotions physically feeling the symptoms of stress in our bodies, the tightness in our chest, the pit in our stomach. We're in the thick. We are given the opportunity to be able to zoom out and look at that perspective of simply living and being gifted a life to live. Allow yourself to be in that space, in those moments for as long as you need. And after you zoom out and find, you know, align back to that gratitude, 
then you can move into what is it that I want to feel right now? What is it that I want to feel in my life right now? Maybe you want to feel more ease. What would allow yourself to feel more ease in these moments right now? This isn't like a rocket science type question, not some crazy shifts or decisions to make, just subtle, simple, in these moments right now, how can I feel more ease? And a hint, the first thing that pops up to you is your answer. Do not second guess it. Do not place judgment. So what brings your feels of ease? Maybe you want to feel aliveness. What makes you feel alive? Maybe you want to feel more joy. What brings you joy? And where are you not letting yourself experience this joy or aliveness or ease or whatever it is in the presence of your day-to-day moments? This is where you make a list. Literally, tangibly, a physical list pen to paper. And make that list. Whatever feeling that you are after in these moments right now, what makes you feel those feelings? What brings you more joy? What brings you more ease? What brings you more aliveness? Make that list. And then after you make that list, you could ask yourself, how often am I doing these things or incorporating them into my day? Allow yourself to be completely honest with yourself because in the simplicity of that task of making that list, you may realize how often you may not be doing those things that bring you the ease or bring you the aliveness or bring you the joy or whatever feeling it is that you're after. And use that as a gentle wake up call because like, fuck, like what needs to change? Because yes, we zoomed out and we have this beautiful perception of being gifted this life. Why are we not living it? Why are we not living it by chasing after the good and chasing after what makes us feel good? Chasing might not be the right word because, again, I'm not trying to bypass. But it's about, like, feeling into this is your life. This is your life. And trust me, I am guilty of this too. And I finally, this morning, I had a good cry. (laughs) I say finally because I I know I've been in, like, a fight or flight the past few days. Like, I, I just, it's been a rough few days, maybe even a week. And just with stuff going on and... It's been going on for a a while more, but I I know that I've fallen out of alignment and I've been in this fight or flight for the past few days and I was unable to cry. Like I was like kind of numb a little bit in a sense. Like I was just going through the motions and like I talk about this on the show. Like I still fall into these, these states too. So I was aware of it and I'm like, why am I not able to effing cry? Like I tried, like I tried to sit there and I tried to just let my, nope, can't, can't force a good cry. So When you're, and I finally did, it felt so good. That tension in my chest was like, poof, gone. But when we have fallen out of alignment, out of our energy of alignment, we might be feeling in that fight or flight, or we might be feeling in survival mode or just feeling the stress or whatever that is, like we're feeling in that limbo. It can be because we're focusing on all the things that need to change in order to feel good again, in order to fall back into alignment, right? And I'm not saying like by making that list and focusing on and zooming out and zooming back in, I'm not saying that all your stuff or all your hardship is going to go away by doing that. I'm not saying that there's not going to be hardships in life. Again, there is. These are practices to help you move through them because there's always going to be hard things. It's about amplifying how you could raise that baseline to come back because we're always, we're wired. We are wired to look at the negative, to look for the negative, to live in the negative. Our brains are naturally hardwired to focus on what is not working because that's its way of keeping us safe and comfy. So when we recognize and become aware that we can still be in love with ourselves and in love with our lives and amplify the joy and the ease and the aliveness, even if we are in the thick, it just takes awareness. In a perspective shift, an intention. It's choosing to fall in love with our lives regardless of our circumstances. Choosing to lean into the hard and allow ourselves to be. To be aware of what lessons can come through. Choosing to take the reins of what feels good and taking initiative and choosing that gratitude or, or doing the thing that's going to bring me joy or doing the thing or feeling the feeling that makes me feel alive. Finding what it is for you that makes you feel those things. Or how you can feel those things. 
So where can you fall a little bit more in love with yourself and a little bit more in love with your life right now in these moments? Where can you reset that baseline? I hope that any little nugget of this episode brought you a message that you needed to hear today because that felt so dang good to just kind of release a little bit. <laughs> so thank you too. <laughs> I'm, I'm always here for you. Like I'm always standing right next to you, standing tall to help you feel good, to help you feel alive and aligned to your energy of alignment, where you know how to connect with yourself and what you need, where, to deeply, where you deeply love and trust yourself and the life that you're living. So with that, I set a date for our free instinctive meditation class. It will be Tuesday, October 1st at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. You do not need to be present. I can always send you the recording, so I still encourage you to sign up for the class even if you can't attend live. I will send you the class and you could do it at any time that you'd like. And this class, it can go right alongside the conversation that we just had today. It's, we are going to be doing a meditation called Your Natural Doorways Meditation. And the intention of that meditation is to help you connect with your natural instinctive ways of falling into meditation, to falling into that meditative state. Because meditative experiences, that is like falling into your energy of alignment. It's like those spon- spontaneously arised moments when we are just like immersed in an activity that we love or maybe we're sitting down intentionally like with your crystals this is me you know with your crystals and your candles lit and your essential oils rolling right like but those other moments when like you're in the day-to-day and like you smell those flowers or you're on that walk or you're having that loved conversation and snuggles with the loved one like whenever we want to feel that sense of aliveness or feel a little bit more healed or that we're on the process of healing or refreshed, refreshing our lives, we can remember and come back to, to relive those experiences again and again and again. This meditation was life changing for me. And that's why that is the meditation that I want to provide you in this free instinctive meditation class. You can grab the link to enroll in this free class in the show notes. And thank you so much for considering to be a part of this. I know this session will help bless your life in some way. And until next week, as always, simply be you. You have everything inside of you to learn your energy of alignment and be unapologetic in who you are. I'm sending my love and so much light. Did you find this episode we read about our empowering peace we might love of you? Thank you for spending this sacred time with me on Naturally Empowered Living. I pray this episode has brought you a step closer to tuning into your energy of alignment. And if it has, please consider leaving a written review sharing how this show has impacted you. Your feedback truly lights me up and helps other moms find their way to this community. And if it feels right, please share this episode with another mom who might be struggling to remind her that she's never alone. Be sure to check the show notes for more ways to connect and explore how we could work together to reclaim your power and deepen your relationship within. Thank you. I appreciate all you are and all you do.